My little brother, like 11 years old, 12 years old, I believe. Last week, week and a half ago, he sent me a link of a Karen video that he found on YouTube. He sent me a link to it. He's like, watch this. I watched it. He texted me back 20 seconds later, like a typical younger brother. Did you watch it? Did you watch it? Did you watch it? And I was like, yeah, I watched it. Gave me a fucking headache and gave me homicidal thoughts. What do you want? He's like, oh, I just, he's like, I, I just, I just wanted to tell you that I thought the same thing. This is one worthless fucking bitch. She's fucking insane. She fucking thinks that she's important. And really, she just has a lonely, pathetic fucking life. And I was like, Julian, you, have you been watching my streams? Cause like, he sounded just like me when he said it. <laughs> he's like, I hate these bitches. I was like. They actually have names, man. They're called Karens. He's like, well, fuck them. I was like, all right. You're definitely a Falcon. That's for sure. My man. Anyways, I just figured I'd, I, 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 I'd tell y'all that. It's December and it's been one of the craziest years in recent history. Barack Obama has just been inaugurated president. The record for the highest grossing movie of all time has just been shattered by Avatar. The number one song of the year is the Black Eyed Peas Boom Boom Pow. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, has passed away. And what year, what year was this? Uh, two, what, 2008, right? I think. No, 2009. Is that what he said? Let me go back record for the highest gross boy i gotta go back even more years in recent history <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the year is 2009 2009 it's December, and it's been one of the craziest years in recent history barack obama has just been inaugurated president the record for the highest grossing movie of all time has just been shattered by avatar the number one song of which was previously held by titanic i believe of the year is the black eyed peas boom boom pow michael jackson the king of pop has passed damn taking a taking a stroll down memory lane bro yeah, I think I was deployed too. The poppy, I'm pretty sure. December 2009? Yeah, I think I was deployed. Well, very beginning of 2009, I don't think I was deployed, but the tail end of 2009, I'm pretty sure I was deployed. Passed away, and Kanye West is now famous for interrupting Taylor Swift during the VMAs. And on top of all of that, it's been one of the worst economic years for America since the Great Depression, with unemployment peaking at 10% and the housing market down 30%. But Barack Obama was such a goddamn superhero, huh? Such a fucking su- Oh, it's time for change. Yeah. The worst change imaginable. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Like, back in those times, I was but, like, a young teenager, and I could have given a rat's fuck about politics. But the way that people were talking about Barack Obama and describing Barack Obama and just propping him up on a goddamn pedestal like he was fucking Superman. Yet he, this motherfucker, had no cape. Couldn't even fly. <laughs> talking about he, like, what the fuck? And despite all the craziness going on in the world, in Richmond, Virginia, a 90-year-old man still takes time out of his day to walk out of his house every morning and hoist the American flag on the 21-foot flagpole in his front yard. Later that Damn. morning, he would walk right past that flagpole on his way to the mailbox to get the mail. And in the mail that day, he would receive a letter from a high-powered law firm informing him that he was hereby ordered to remove that flagpole and never fly the American flag in his front yard again due to, and I quote, aesthetic reasons relating to curb appeal. And I know what you're thinking. How on earth can you order somebody in America to not fly the American flag? The trashy ass, pussy ass, cowardly ass, homeowners association in their own front yard. Well, unfortunately, this gentleman lived in an HOA, a homeowners association, which if you don't know is basically diet communism. It's where a bunch of people build some nice houses then they get together and they're like, hey, we got all these nice houses. You know what we need? more government we've got federal one of one of my buddies from high school his parents lived in a neighborhood under the homeowners association they had to ask for permission to paint their fence to paint their fence man no i'm not asking for i don't give a fuck where i live where i am i'm not asking another motherfucking human for permission to do anything with what I paid for. 
It's just like I told that snobby fucking NCO when I was in the goddamn military. He was like, you're gonna fucking answer your phone, and when I call you, you better answer. Okay, Sergeant, how about this? How about you pay my fucking phone bill? How about that? He's like, what? Excuse me? Yeah, you want me to answer my phone on a goddamn Saturday? Pay my motherfucking phone bill. If you're not willing to pay for it, you can't tell me how to goddamn use it. Capiche? Okay, I'm glad we're good. State, county, municipal, it's not enough. We need even more rules. We should come together, designate a tribunal of elder Karens to make all the important decisions for us, you know, like whether or not I'm allowed to park my truck in front of my house overnight, what colored flowers I'm allowed to grow in my garden, and what color I'm allowed to paint my fucking house, you know, to protect our property value. But it is on this day that the tribunal of Karens in charge of the Sussex Square HOA in Richmond, Virginia are about to find out the hard way that they have picked a fight with the wrong guy because this is not just any old man this is retired army colonel van t barfoot yeah and guess what he has way more friends than you do and his friends are a lot louder than yours are and most of his friends can probably still whoop your ass at the whopping age of whatever they are probably old as fuck now a combat veteran with 35 years of service and the recipient of a silver star, a bronze star, two- Your mom is one of the HOA members that walked through everyone's backyard. I'm sorry, Captain Z. This may sound harsh. I catch anyone walking through my goddamn backyard on some fuck shit like that, checking the color or the placement or this or that or on some stupid shit. You're getting the shit slapped out of you, bro. You're getting the shit slapped out of you. And find me. I won't pay it. Like, like what, like what Jordan Peterson said about fucking pronouns. Fine me, I won't pay it. Put me in jail, I'll go on hunger strike. I'm not doing that childish, dumb, fucking lame bullshit, dog. I'm not doing that. I, 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 I don't fucking care. If I ever find myself in a place under the Homeowners Association, because... I'm not choosing a place specifically under the homeowners association. I'm choosing a place for me. And it just so if it just so happens to be there, I'll try my best not to make it there because my plans is to live out in the woods in the middle of fucking nowhere. But if I just somehow for some odd fucking reason find myself under that umbrella, I'm not doing shit for these fucking people. You don't get to tell me what I can do with my property. Okay, and if you want to tell me what I have to do with my fucking property, how about you pay the rent, you pay the mortgage, you pay the water, you pay the electricity. Until then, shut the fuck up and lick my ass. There's That's not happening, bro. It will never happen to me. Find me, I won't pay it. Put me in jail, I'll go on hunger strike. Come in my yard one more goddamn time, I'm slapping the shit out of you. That's just it. Army Air Medals, the Legion of Merit, three Purple Hearts, and the Congressional Medal of Honor. Born in 1919, Van would grow up in Mississippi during the Great Depression. American brown guy, an apartment is not a home, it's an apartment. This is the Homeowners Association, not the Apartment Owners Association. Apartments are run by whoever, whoever owns that complex. As a one-quarter Choctaw Native American farm kid. Then in 1940 at the- Oh, the president of her neighborhood. Well, you know what? She'd be getting a presidential ass whooping age of 21, he would volunteer to join the U.S. Army. He would achieve the rank of sergeant by 1941, and then Pearl Harbor would happen. In 1940, the United States Army had 269,000 soldiers, and by the end of 1941, it had 1.4 million. And with now Sergeant Barfoot being a non-commissioned officer in a leadership role, he is one of the few people that America and the world would turn to to train and lead all these new recruits into the largest war the world has ever seen. And that is exactly what Sergeant Barfoot did, leading his men through three amphibious lands at Sicily, Salerno, and Anzio before his entire unit would begin fighting their way inland through Italy. Then at the small town of Carano, Italy, Barfoot and his entire company would be stopped in their tracks. In order to advance further inland, they were going to have to go through the mountains. But in those mountains, the Germans had established fortified fighting positions, and there was seemingly no way through. Over the course of the next several weeks, Barfoot would lead his... Oh, absolutely, Moonshine Operator. I love this dude. ...squad through scouting missions, trying to find any possible way through the German defenses, but there were none. Every single possible pass through the mountains, Germans had- I just feel like, I, I feel, I feel like me and Fat Electrician would get along, but we're two, we're completely polar opposite. Whereas in, I don't know too much about Fat Electrician, but I feel like 
our method of getting results is very, very different. As Fat Electrician would probably be calm and cordial and respectful. I'm the exact opposite of calm, cordial, and respectful. It would be, if me and him hung out, we would literally be the embodiment of good cop, bad cop. With me being the bad cop all the goddamn time. And him telling me, yo, Falcon, you need to chill out, buddy. Because, like, come on, man. Just chill for a second. Just let, 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 let us see what we can do. And I'm like, nope, I'm burning everything down. Minefield covered that minefield with fortified machine gun positions. And on top of that, they obviously had the high ground. After being halted for over a month, the order would finally come down that Barfoot's company is to just attack run face first into the German defenses and try to fight their way through it. Now, if you watched last week's video, you know that trying to fight fortified machine gun positions with the high ground is an absolutely terrible idea. If you didn't, there's this guy, Jake McNasty McNeese, him and 34 men successfully beat 700 Germans in a firefight because they had fortified machine gun nests and the high ground. I want to know the lore, but behind his nickname, McNasty. And this time around, the Germans have that plus a minefield. This is borderline a death sentence for Van's entire company and everybody knows it. Now, Sergeant Barfoot believed that leaders should lead from the front and be willing to die for their men if necessary, which is the politically correct way of me telling you that Barfoot's about to do some gangster shit. He goes <laughs> to the company commander and is like, hey, we're all gonna die anyways. Let me go out there with just me and my squad. We'll try to traverse the minefield, get in there, take out all the machine gun positions, just by ourselves. Company commander's like, I mean, we're all gonna die anyways. Fuck it, why not throw a Hail Mary, give you a shot. So that's exactly what they do. Barfoot takes off like a bat out of hell, leading from the front, not checking to see how far behind his men are. He then makes it all the way through the minefield, jumps into the ditch, looks behind him. His men haven't made it yet. Doesn't matter, gotta keep pressing forward. He gets to the first enemy machine gun emplacement, throws a grenade in there, blows up, bang, goes in to check, just anatomical confetti everywhere. Nobody survived. Hell None yeah. of his squad mates have made it yet, but he hasn't heard a mine blow up in the background, so they must be okay. They're just being overly cautious. He advances to the second machine gun emplacement, rushes in, kills two Germans, the other ones surrender. At this point, Barfoot's squad catches up with them. Apparently two of them have gotten hurt while traversing that minefield, at which point Barfoot's kind of- I don't know, moonshine operator, but I'm the sole reason why they added new rules and new standards and new SOPs to the pen flare in Afghanistan. We're no longer in Afghanistan, so it doesn't fucking matter. But from the time that I left Afghanistan to the time that the military as a whole left Afghanistan, there were brand new rules put into place regarding the pen flare because of me. So... I don't know about any of that, but I feel like it was no holds barred in fucking World War II. There, were, there was no fucking soft little bitch here in the States talking about, you can't do that to the Germans, man. Fuck it. It's war. Fuck them. They do the same to us. Kind of just like, fine, whatever. Just stay with the prisoners. I'll take care of it. Just complete dad energy of like, hold the flashlight and stay out of the way. I'm fucking working. Yeah. He advances to the third enemy machine gun position completely by himself. Bear in mind, these Germans heard a grenade, a bunch of submachine gun fire, Germans screaming, and now there's just boss music playing and it's getting <laughs> louder as Van gets closer and closer. Van turns the corner. The Germans are like, fuck this. I quit. I surrender. I give up, you win. At this point, Sergeant Barfoot has effectively saved the day. His entire company now does not have to bum rush a minefield and a bunch of fortified enemy machine gun positions. Hooray. So Sergeant Barfoot changes gears, hops into the old leadership role. He starts consolidating everything, figuring out how many POWs he has, whatnot. And then a couple minutes later, the Germans launch a counterattack and three German tanks come rolling down the road directly towards them. At this point, Barfoot continues to dad dick the entire situation. And just like, give me the bazooka, stay in the trench, I got this. Gets out, walks out in front of these tanks, wide open, no cover, no concealment, nothing. Just standing out there like it's fucking Tiananmen Square with a bazooka. Shoots at the first tank, knocks it out. The other two tanks are just kind of like, I mean, it's one crazy American with a bazooka standing in the open. This is for sure a trap, right? So they turn around and retreat. Now, just so we're all on the same page, this man has sprinted through a minefield, cleared three German machine gun nests, killed eight Germans, captured 17 more, and knocked out a tank in the span of like 45 minutes. And he's like, 
I can do more. So he advances further into enemy held territory by himself, finds a German artillery emplacement, proceeds to blow that up too. And then he's like, okay, that's probably enough for today. And he goes back to his men. He then proceeds to get his men and all of the POWs back to the company. And he himself personally carries his two wounded men back 1700 yards. And that's it. That's the end of the story. That was like Tuesday to this guy. And he just goes on. Bro, buddy carrying someone seven. Did, do you know how hard it is to buddy carry somebody? Full kit, full gear, full everything. And you buddy carry that you, you carried two people. I don't know if he carried both of them at the same time or if he just carried one, came back and grabbed the other, but to buddy carry someone, 1700. We had to do we had we had to do buddy carries during CLS training, which is combat lifesaver. We had to carry them 50 meters. And after that 50 meters, I was just like, okay, get the fuck off me. I'm done. For the rest of the day, I am tired. Like, holy shit. But the the war translation of this is adrenaline and the the fear of death. So you'll carry someone as long as you fucking need to. But still, that is fucking insane here. A couple months down the road, his entire unit's in France. The commander walks up to him and is like, congratulations, you're receiving the Medal of Honor. At which point, Barfoot requests that he receives it in the field in front of his men. He didn't want to wait till they got home and had a ceremony. He didn't want it in front of friends or... A living recipient. Respect. Family or Congress people. None of that. He wanted it in front of the men that... It doesn't matter, Glenn. You're carrying dead weight. It's dead weight. It, it truly doesn't matter regardless. Nominated him to get it because that's what meant the most to him. He didn't really care about the medal itself. He cared that the men that he was tasked with leading into battle thought so highly of them that he thought he deserved that medal. And that's why he requested that he receive it in front of them. He would go on to make it through the war in one piece and return home as a Medal of Honor recipient and war hero. At this point, Lieutenant Barfoot then goes on to serve throughout the entire Korean War. Seeing it through to its completion, he has now served 20 years in the military and it's time to retire, is what most people would say. But Barfoot, on the other hand, is like, fuck it, I just need to do something new, something exciting, maybe a little bit easier on my knees. This whole light infantry thing isn't as light as I heard it was. <laughs> I want to go ahead and be a helicopter pilot. So he goes to Army Aviation School as a major and at the age of 40, ends up being one of the top helicopter pilots the army has and then he goes on to serve in vietnam as a helicopter pilot okay if you don't know during vietnam like most dangerous jobs tunnel rat helicopter pilot door gunner hands down not even a question yeah serves throughout the entire vietnam war comes back home finally retires after 35 years in service and achieving the rank of colonel he then goes on to finish out the rest of his working life as a military there is nothing else that this man could have accomplished. Nothing. There is nothing else that this man could have accomplished with his military service. He did everything. He got every possible award, every highest award, fought in multiple wars, reached the highest rank, aside from general, but back then, uh lieutenant colonel or just colonel itself was extremely fucking high and we don't have as many generals uh, there probably weren't that many generals back in the day as there is now so that rank right there it's whatever whatever but fucking there's nothing else this guy could have really done with his military service he did it all contractor now military contractor that could mean anything he could be serving food at the chow hall he could be sitting in an office giving people advice or he could be kicking down fucking doors and looking for uh weapons caches or fucking terrorist groups or a contractor can literally mean fucking anything let's good lord this guy loved the military writing manuals he could be doing some extracurricular gangster shit. We really have no idea. However, I will point out it's a little bit odd that some dude from Mississippi decided to put his roots down in Richmond, Virginia, which is like, I don't know, an hour away from CIA headquarters. Like, I, you, you, you do what you want with that information, <laughs> I guess. He had, a, he had a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience, and he was a very invaluable asset to the military so yeah take from that what you will really 
maybe some uh maybe some i don't know what he could have done in the cia i don't even want to speculate so then after a career of doing some extracurricular gangster shit, I mean contracting, he would go on, retire, and live happily ever after until one day in December of 2009, when at 90 years old, he would open a letter informing him he was not allowed to fly the American flag in his own front yard, which bear in mind, literal Nazis with machine guns couldn't stop him from flying the American flag in Germany in the 1940s. And now you're gonna- And now it's damn sure not gonna be a bunch of bunch of fucking Karens with bleeding fucking tampons that have nothing good going on in their lives because that's that's all they are bro I try to tell him he can't do it in fucking Virginia in his own front yard it's a bold strategy so the next day <laughs> Colonel Barfoot's son-in-law calls up the local radio show they run with the story it gets picked up nationally almost immediately everybody from the White House Everything press secretary silly. to Fox They're News to the local VFW is absolutely furious okay stop at this point in time, it's 2009, Barack Obama's president. Do you understand what I've just told you? This HOA is fucked up so bad that they've got the Obama administration and Fox News to agree on something, okay? Yeah. This is a critical fucking error on their part. Yeah. The HOA would end up backing down within a week because apparently when the entire nation is looking at you like the eye of Sauron, it ends up being bad for the aesthetics and curb- And this was before Twitter was, you know, Twitter. It was that bad. It was that bad. These days, you trend on Twitter for, for, I don't know, 45 minutes you get fucking canceled. But this was before Twitter was Twitter. This was before it was what it was. This was before, you know, people were canceled just for fucking being patriotic. This, the, damn of your little neighborhood. And then the law firm that wrote the letter in the first place has since renamed and rebranded their entire law firm. Oh, let's not forget. Let us not forget who the fuck they were. Names. Names. Faces. Not gonna ask, I'm not gonna ask to dox these motherfuckers, but names and fa names and faces. Let's not forget who these pieces of shit were. You can rebrand and you can rename, but we're always gonna remember that y'all were pieces of shit. And I'm so glad we're going over this now in 2023 because I love not forgetting and I love bringing up shitty fucking people that did shitty fucking shit and talking about it all over again to make them feel like shit all over again. And it's been signed into Virginia state law that no HOA can tell anybody to not fly the American flag on their get fucking dicked on property. Colonel Barfoot proving victorious yet again would then go on to fly the American flag in his front yard every single day for the next two years until passing away in his home at the age of 92. And as of March 2023, Fort Pickett in Virginia has since been renamed to Fort Barfoot in his honor. So in That's a rename that I can get behind right there. Some of the most recent military uh military base renames have been fucking stupid and because of soft ass fucking feelings i can actually get behind this one conclusion whether it's a little old man at the restaurant eating ice cream for dessert your friendly neighborhood mailman or just some elderly gentleman trying to fly the american flag in his front yard try to be nice to everybody because you really really might not know who you're fucking with thanks for watching best way to support the videos go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com quack bang out i feel personally i still feel personally that I was doing my job. I feel I'm like leaving. I'm nice to everybody, right, guys? I feel like I'm nice to everybody. The only people I'm not nice to are the people that don't deserve it. Really. And we live in an age where the people that don't deserve niceness, I say something about them, or I say something to them, or I type something about them, and then people look at me like I'm the asshole. Unbelievable. You know that once upon a time, I wrote on Twitter, I think all t I don't even know if I should, I should say this because of fucking TOS. I'm just quoting something I said, Twitch. Please, no blood, okay? I, 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 no blood, all right? Just just calm the fuck down. Just something I said a long time ago. Don't bleed about it. Don't fucking get salty about it. Don't whinge about it like a fucking cunt, right? Once upon a time, I typed on Twitter, I think all Taliban should kill themselves. I got banned for that. I got banned for telling a terrorist organization that I went to war against to end their lives when they already do that.
by choice to kill people like me. I got banned for saying that to the Taliban on Twitter. That's the world we live in. Fucking pathetic goddamn peons, bro. Pathetic goddamn peons, man. That's the world we fucking live in. I'm nice to everybody. I'm just not nice to the people that don't fucking deserve it. And I'm sorry, I will never be nice to that group of fucking people. Uh, never. The people of Afghanistan, fine people. Just like us, they try to live and survive and they try to go about their day and make their living and enjoy their life just like the rest of us Americans. But the Taliban... Bro, they can suck my fucking dick. They can suck my fat dick, actually. Really. And if you're Taliban, fuck you. Fuck you straight to hell. Y'all are pussy-ass cowards. And y'all never got me. Ever. Y'all never fucking got me. Y'all tried. Y'all really did try. Maybe next time you make... A 150 pound bomb of HME, you don't bury it so deep under the concrete. Had it been, I don't know, maybe five feet higher in that culvert that you put it under, you fucking cowards. I'm talking to dead people right now, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't have any, I don't ha have any problems with speaking ill of the dead if the dead is a dead Taliban. You fucking cowards, had y'all built that fucking IED just five feet higher in that culvert, you may have got one of us. But because y'all are fucking trash and goddamn cowardly and y'all can't use these hands and y'all can't actually shoot fucking weapons accurately, well, y'all got got by air superiority. Y'all did. Y'all got got. And the best part about it, I heard y'all get got. I heard y'all get sent to the fucking Shadow Realm and that made me smile. It put a smile on my face knowing y'all were no longer goddamn breathing. I heard the moment that y'all died. I heard the moment that y'all got lit up. And I fucking laughed. I giggled like a little fucking schoolgirl. My face, even though I was fucked up, I had a smile like the fucking Grinch from ear to fucking ear because fuck a goddamn Taliban. Y'all are a shit stain on this fucking planet.